Finally got some flexible filaments printing in my CR10. Uh, took a lot of work, and I'll tell you a little bit about the differences. I tried MakerFlex TPEE, Sane Smart TPU, and NinjaFlex TPU. The differences between these are the TPEE is very rigid. It's flexible still, much more flexible than anything else and really has great resistance to stretch, but it is hard. The TPU from Sane Smart is a lot more stretchy and a lot softer, and the Ninja Flex is super stretchy and a wet noodle. It's really, really soft. As a matter of fact, it's one of the more problematic to print. I'll show you the differences on the pieces. This one is the TPEE, and it squishes, but, and it flexes, but it's very rigid. It goes back to form, it doesn't deform. It's really, really hard to break. It's a great material for a bumper or any other application like that. The TPU from Sane Smart actually does flex a lot more. It's got a nice finish to it. You can see how it squishes. And the same thing, it's almost impossible to break and it always returns to form. And the Ninja Flex is super, super soft. This is with a 10% infill, super soft. I had some delamination on the underside of the Ninja Flex between the outline, the border. Maybe I have to increase my overlap. Maybe I didn't have the first layer right. That did not happen on the other pieces. But the Ninja Flex is amazing. The only problem was I had to slow down the printing speeds of the Ninja Flex. On both of the others, I was able to get 50 millimeters a second. On the Ninja Flex, 35 was the max, and the 20 was really perfect. 35 had a little bit of zits. In all of these, I didn't do any cleanup, I didn't have any stringing or any really crazy defects. You can see the resolution. I think I printed it at 0.2 millimeter layer height and they came out very nice. Um, I'll share my settings on the same link and maybe we can pause it and then I'll show it on. So here we are printing. I've got a CR10 going and a Maker Gear M2. The CR10 we're printing the Sane Spark TPU. See it over here, the blue TPU. It's a wall hanger that I had made and put up on Thingiverse. On this machine right now, we have the all Swiss metal hot end getting us the right temperature. And I've got a Bowden tube going all the way around and actually through the all metal uh, extruder that I bought from MacGuin 3D. But you can see I actually got the Bowden tube through and right up to the gears. And the other Bowden tube straight up to the gears. There's no gap there. When I had a minimum gap that I thought was acceptable, it just wasn't enough. The filament kept escaping. A little bit. Um, right now it's laying down the first layer. It's going pretty fast. I have this set at 50 millimeters a second. I print on PEI on glass, but since it sticks so so strong to the PEI, I actually have to put glue stick on it to act as sort of a peel-up layer, which then I have to clean off, and that's kind of gummy, unfortunately. But I get good results. It, without the glue stick, it just sticks almost permanently to the PEI, and I really have to force it up. A um, couple other modifications. Simply put on light strip all the way around and a light bar on the back here going down to the part. I put dual blowers on the on the extruder. They're actually really strong. Most of the time I have them only going at 60%. I have uh, I also made a reinforcement mount for that dual blower mount so that it can be a little bit stronger. I set up also a light switch right here that I made that's also on Thingiverse if anybody wants. On my power supply, I modified the existing USB holder so that it can also hold, excuse me, the SD card holder so it can also hold the USB card. 
and you can see all the other mods we did. The, the support structures, I think, are, are very good. I have this dorky little elastic keeping the Bowden tube up just so it kind of stays pretty well and when it's at the lowest position. At the highest, I don't think that's too much of a problem. And uh, that's about it.